An accident at work in 2011 left Peter Coughlin with catastrophic damage to his brainstem. Well, the injury was so severe, Peter was diagnosed with locked-in syndrome, a condition that meant that while he was fully aware of what was going on, he was completely paralysed and only able to communicate with the tiniest flutters of his eyelids. Well, no-one with this condition has even been known to walk independently out of a hospital ward, yet we're pleased to say that Peter is here with us this morning. This is an extraordinary story. It really is, and thank you for being here. So... You're, you were born in Stockport and you joined the army when you were 18 and you served for three years. I mean, this alone, you left after being diagnosed with lung cancer and you had a bit of a recovery from that, but you did. After that, you moved to Australia um, to become a bricklayer. So this part of the story begins in 2011. So this was a normal day at work for you. What, what happened that day? I was working in a trench and um, I was probably uh, about six foot under yeah. and I banged my head on the concrete. Sharp piece of concrete penetrates my skull, and uh, yeah, just slowly clotted. But I was later, mm. I lost my eyesight that day. Right. So, so it was. This was a, a, a gradual, but very serious gradual decline from bang in your head. Um, did you did you stop work or did you carry on? I carried on. Typically, um, uh, you know, get the job done, carry yeah. on, and on the way home, that's when I started seeing the effects. I went into a shop and uh, paid for a drink and. Um, the guy gave me the change and I lost my eyesight. My eyesight just left me. And, uh, and then it came back, look, back I the, briefly. I heard the guy saying to me, here's a change, and I, I had to feel for his hands because I lost my sight. And so your body kind of started to, to shut down, really, at this yeah. point. You went home, you slept for four hours, and you woke up, you had all this tingling, and your wife at the time took you to the hospital. And you say it was down to your sister who met you there that you sort of owe your life to because she was very quick thinking. Yeah, it was... Um, it was, and I knew I was dying, I knew as my body was shutting down and I knew I was dying and my sister banged on the glass and said, I want some help, my brother now. Mm. And uh, because of the, the, um, the shouting, and she, the quick she's not like that, no. because she was shouting desperately for help, they uh, managed to get the attention of the doctors and they came out and told me from the A&E. Well, they, uh, they put you in an induced coma. Um, and was treated you as, as best as possible. Um, and so when you finally came round, it was your hearing that came back first, yeah. wasn't it? And so what was the process of you coming round and realising that, in actual fact, you were locked in? I don't think I really thought it was real at first when I woke up, when I came round, cos I'd hear you hearing words like, uh, it's too early to tell and you may need a peg feed. And I think that was must have been my mother talking to my uh, no neurologist talking um, was I'd never heard the words like peg feed before, um, so I didn't actually know I was awake. I couldn't understand, you know, wasn't awake, couldn't see anything, so I wasn't sure if I was in a dream at the time. Yeah. And so you you said that one of the toughest things was sort of losing all independence. You couldn't you couldn't speak, you couldn't communicate, you couldn't scream even though you wanted to. But you're losing all total control and just sort of giving it up to the nurses to get to care for you. Yeah, you lose your dignity, but the uh, the nurses try the best to keep the dignity. Yeah. God bless them. Yeah, and absolutely. So, gra gra gradually, what, what was the first time that you could communicate to the outside world and say, I am in here and I know what's going on? Uh, thankfully, I was uh, introduced to a, a letter board because I could blink. Um, and my ex-wife noticed I could blink and she obviously started the process for me to, to have this card built and my family were all great and they, they, they basically sat down with me and I had to learn very slowly to learn how to communicate on this card and it was a, it was a board for the alphabet with different colours on it mm -hmm. so you'd blink for one colour and then blink for the letter mm -hmm. you wanted. It's a, it, what's extraordinary is that the incredible determination, which is all in your book, um, and it's the fact that you, you put a pillow on the bed um, and it took you three weeks to kick it off. Um, gradually, bit by bit by bit, you end up in... I didn't actually kick it off, I'm sorry. Just to move it? It was just trying to push the pillow. It took three weeks to actually get my foot to actually... To touch an it. indent, yeah. Oh, right. And then... You go. You, you then doggedly, determinedly go through rehab, um, and nobody really having any great high expectation that the fact that you might you might stand up. Um, but this is you know this is testament to 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 you that you were absent. You absolutely refused to give up. 
Absolutely, yeah. It took me a year to drink water, but yeah, I, I just, I just wanted, I wanted out of there. I knew I was going home, and there's nothing, there's no other thought process. But I've got to get out of here, and I would just use every minute of the day to move, or try and move something, or try and try and. Uh, it took me three weeks to retrain my eyes and learn to swallow and get my head lifting up and uh, yeah it's amazing what you don't but think you of you did it i mean you did it you're sat here now i mean you are sort of a living embodiment of hope for so many other people um and now what you've done is you've come back here and you are helping other people aren't you i try to yeah i do try in in what ways so this is a this is you you're a, a disabled support worker aren't you yeah i was i volunteered for um two hospitals for a long time for about 500 hours volunteer service. I wrote my book and uh, I, I try my best to give back to the community. And yeah, I'm the first man in the world that retrained in allied healthcare support to, to uh, be a support worker with disabilities now. Well, good for you. And, incredible. Um, and what do you say? Because there will be people in rehab who will be watching this today, there for whatever reasons that, that they are there, looking at the world, thinking, you know, this is a hell of a mountain mm. to climb. What do you say to them? Don't, don't count the days, you know, make the days count. Just do what you can every day and keep pushing and keep believing. First person that they've ever seen walk out of, a, of, of, of rehab in the way you did and it was Six. amazing to see you walk in here. It today. really was, yeah. Six months, one day, I'm very proud of that.